Makers, doers, how tours, what is up? Today is Make Every Day 67. And today we are going to get back to resuming a failed print. This is the deep dive that I teased the other day on the live stream. And I really wanted a chance to show you guys my technique for recovering a print that quits partway through. Sadly, the other day I was printing uh, Luby 3 ds famous Sorceress, a great model, and I got about 95% of the way done, and I ended up uh, getting a jam, and lo and behold, I lost the top of her head and her hands, and we all know to do sorcery, you need your hands. So today we're going to attempt to recover this uh, egregious error. And in order to do this, uh, a lot of things have to work properly. So um, plenty of people would suggest, you know what, you're better off just starting, you know, printing the little parts that you missed and gluing them on. Yes, you can do it that way, but uh, being a hacker, I like to see if I can't find a cool way to resume where I left off. Uh, one, because it's a cool challenge, and two, it just makes me feel better. So humor me with this. But I'm going to start off by opening up the G-code file that I'd used the other day uh, to start the print. And if you've never opened a G-code file before, you'll see that it's just plain text, a bunch of lines of plain text. Uh, and I know that looking at code may be intimidating to people that aren't accustomed to doing so, but I promise you this is not as scary as it looks. Uh, especially when you have a great slicer like Simplify 3D that's really verbose with its commentary. So the first thing you'll notice anytime you open up something that Simplify 3D is sliced is at the very top it's going to give you a list of all the parameters that were set in the slicer uh, at the time that you generated the print. Uh, if you notice here anything that leads with a semicolon what that means is it's a comment nothing is actually happening when this line is encountered by the printer it just means uh, this is informational should anybody be looking at the file other than the printer so um, I'm not going to get into what each one of these things means uh, here a lot of them are pretty self -ex explanatory and they're telling you what settings were were made but we're gonna get down here when we start to see letters and numbers these are actual g-code commands so the first step is we have to make sure our model is prepped we're gonna clean off the the top layer so that everything is at the same height a lot of times when your print fails it's part way through a layer uh, it didn't fail perfectly and it's oftentimes really hard to tell by just looking at it especially when your layer heights are 0.1 millimeters or 0.2 millimeters that's not easy to see with the naked eye so uh, we'll take out a, a ruler get a rough measure of it and then I like to walk manually the print head to the points that I know uh, are close and then work it down we always want to start above give ourselves a healthy margin and work our way down so that we don't risk crashing into the model and knocking it off the build plate if you knock it off the build plate you're done so uh this has actually been sitting for two days now uh and the build plate hasn't been heated and thankfully it seems to be stuck on there pretty well still um you got to be really careful when you're cleaning off that layer that you're not bumping it but we've done all that, we've cleared the layer, we've uh, cleaned out the, the print head, we know it pr prints plastic. So the first thing we wanna do is we're gonna home the print head. And in order to do any commands, uh, we need a way to talk to the printer. This also may not be something you're accustomed to doing and this is going to be different for everyone depending on what, uh, what printer you have, what software you're using to control the printer, whether you're tethered or not. I can't go into every single uh, aspect. If you don't know how to send G-code commands to your printer, you're gonna wanna look that up. But to carry on, I'm gonna show you what I use. I use something that a lot of people do called Octoprint. And this is an awesome piece of software that's actually embedded using a Raspberry Pi in my printer that allows me to wirelessly connect to it. So the printer is connected to the same network that my computer is. And you'll see here that uh, I have a terminal view. And what the terminal is, is really just a look at what code the printer is reading at any given time. And right now it's just spitting out a bunch of status messages that it's waiting for something to do. 
So what we're gonna do is we're first gonna tell it to home. And uh, I happen to know that the G code command for that is G28, but you may not know that. It's gonna home. And if you don't know G code commands, which uh, many of you I'm sure don't, there is a fantastic resource on the RepRap wiki page right here. It's reprap.org slash wiki slash G hyphen code. And it is a rather exhaustive list of all of the potential G code commands you might encounter. We're gonna focus on just a few for, for our purposes here. Um, but if you do this often enough, you'll start to remember certain G code commands and what they're used for. So we've homed our print head. We know we're at zero, zero, zero. I've measured and I've done my manual manipulation of the tool head and I know that the Z height I need to be at is 100.45 millimeters. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna run a find command in my G code and I'm gonna search for Z height equals 100.45. I happen to know that Simplify 3D is set up to uh, add commentary every time it changes Z height, it'll send an M117 command and you can look what that means up in, in the RepRap wiki, but I'll tell you right now, all it means is display this text on the screen uh, on my printer, if, if I have one. Some printers don't have an LCD screen. In this case, uh, it would report layer 1004. Uh, the Z height is 100.45 uh, millimeters. So. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna tell the tool head to go to that height. We always, always, always wanna set the Z height first. We don't wanna risk sending the print head into the model and knocking it off the build plate because if that happens, you're done, right? Game over. So uh, I'm gonna send a G command, that uh, G code command that specifically tells us to do that. And that one you'll see right here when I look at this layer height is right here, G1, basically go to a location, Z for the Z axis, 100.45, and the F is the feed rate, or basically the speed at which it's going to per perform that maneuver. So I'm going to send that command, and you will see the build plate starts moving. And we're gonna wait for that to complete, but what happens when the printer's reading this a lot of the times is it will queue up a series of G codes so that it, it keeps doing things one after another so it's not pausing and stuff. But it basically just runs through this list of commands one at a time and just tells the printer what to do. Okay, so after we get to the right Z height we need, we need to travel over to the X and Y coordinates to make sure that we are in the right spot to start. So looking at the G code here, we've already gone to the Z height of 100.45 at our specified feed rate. And what we wanna do next is go to the X and Y uh, coordinates, which in this case happen to happen first in, in the uh, G code. So we're working a little bit backwards, but you can tell um, that they're, they're happening effectively the same time. And you'll see in the little note here that says inner perimeter. What I wanna do is I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit for the purposes of confirmation first. And I'm gonna look for the outer perimeter. The way I sliced this was so that it does inner perimeters first and then outer perimeters. I like the way that that finishes better on my printer. That's a configuration inside the slicer. It may be different for yours. You may not even have this kind of commentary. So um, this is why we confirm the position of things before we get started. So. Um, I'm gonna copy the go commands for the outer perimeter and you can see here that I have a, a go X coordinate and I have a Y coordinate and I have a speed, which is fine. What you don't wanna do is you don't wanna grab one of these ones accidentally below it that has an E value. Uh, the E value is just saying to extrude this much plastic as well. Now, right now, um, the print head's not heated up so it'll ignore basically extrude values unless the the hot end is at a certain temperature. But for best practice sake, we really only want to be moving the X and Y steppers and not the uh, extruder for the hot end. So we're going 
to the outer perimeter and we're gonna send that and we'll take a quick peek and I can see I'll show you a close up of it that it is right on the edge of where it needs to be the outer perimeter of her wrist so that is a good sign I think we are in the right spot we have our confirmation so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to zeros just so I know that I'm clear of the model uh, and we're gonna start editing the g-code now okay so first thing we need to do is search for our z height we know we need and that's a hundred point four five millimeters and that'll take us to looks like layer 1004 and then we're gonna delete all the layers above this because we've already printed so I'm holding down the shift key and I'm scrolling all the way to the top but I'm not gonna quite grab everything yet I'm gonna grab everything up until layer one right here so I uh, holding shift down I'm gonna click this and uh, select that and delete it so this is my starting layer now and then we're gonna go through the start script really quick uh, to make sure that we've got everything set properly um, and that our normal start script isn't gonna do anything that would possibly crash the head into our model since we are resuming uh, already partially printed model. So uh, these G codes, you can look them up on the RepRap wiki, but they set relative positioning and this guy here sets our fan speed and we do want to set our fan to full right away. So we're going to change that to um, 255, which is 100%. Uh, and then we're going to go down here and we're going to set our heat bed temperature to uh, 60 and 205 on the tool head. That's great. Uh, we select our tool. We set our offsets. We home. Now, right after we home, um, instead of starting at zero now, we want to get up to the height we're at. So I'm going to right off the bat after the home go to the z height we need so i copied the go command and uh, we're going to z100.45 at a feed rate of 4200 that's good uh, we don't need this commentary on lin advance we're not using that now here we want to make sure we delete our traditional park and heat up commands because the gantry would even if i do move the tool head clear um, while that's moving back it can potentially clip our model so we want to get rid of that and we'll do our extrusion just uh, in the home position at the z height we're setting um, and I'll just grab the filament out of the way before it before it goes so we don't get extra stringing um, we'll do our cleaning we don't need to do a triangular cleaning pattern because we're not over the wiper and we don't need the cleaning nozzle comment we will extrude so we're primed and ready to rock. We will set our uh, extrusion settings. And speaking of, I'm going to copy this. This is retraction settings, uh, extrusion. Uh, we're not going to go to the Z height 0.15 right away because we are uh, at layer 1004 now. So we've got our heights right and one last thing I want to do here we've already set our G height here I want to make sure that my extrusion starts right away um, simplify 3d will throw this in intermittently uh, at different points so this is just basically setting our um, uh, extrusion multiplier and rate and uh, it didn't happen to set it right away on this inner perimeter because we kind of skipped ahead. It was probably in a, a couple uh, lines earlier. So I'm going to make sure that it's here. The main takeaway is make sure that you're extruding filament, uh, that, that that extrusion multiplier is set and ready to go so that these commands on each of the X and Ys are actually pushing filament in the right direction. So now is the moment of truth. This file is saved. I am going to now upload it. And this might differ for you. You may save it to an SD card and move it over. One of the nice things about Octoprint is uh, I am able to send files remotely over the network. So I'm gonna upload and it's on my desktop. And the file is this one right here we just saved. Open. It's uploading. Okay. And it's there. And now the moment of truth.
One last thing, we say a little prayer, we cross our fingers, and we click the print button. And voila, here she is. Uh, I have to say, she came out pretty good, considering. It looks like, it, this may be hard to see from where you are, but the the plastic seems like it's a little bit darker in its transition, uh, and you can see a bit of a seam right where her wrists are, but that's kind of to be expected, especially at this size of this model at a 0.1 mil layer height. Um, a little bit of a seam here. I suppose if I was a little bit more diligent, it's you know, it's pretty bad. I can you know you can clean it up with a hobby knife uh, a bit better. But all in all, um, I am very happy with the fact that now I have a great usable go. model. My sorceress has her hands again, and uh, the hacking of the G code has saved the day. So I hope that this is of uh, use to some of you guys, uh, that it's interesting. If I miss something and you have questions, let me know in the comments. Uh, as always, I appreciate you guys watching and make on.